Hey devs, back again for another Tool and Tip Tuesday. In this week's tip, I want to take a look at how you can improve your pull requests in your projects on GitHub by taking advantage of pull request templates. That can help take your pull requests from looking like this to something a little bit more useful like this. By adding these templates, we can take some of the mental work out of ensuring that we remember to add enough detail and information to our pull requests. This also can help educate new developers on our projects to what is expected when creating a pull request. So let's dive in and look at how we can easily add a pull request template to our project. So if I'm in a GitHub repo, the first thing that I need to do is create a new file in the root directory of that repo. Now you can do this directly from in GitHub by clicking create file. Now pull request templates live within a dot GitHub directory in your project. So to start, I'll type dot GitHub and then I'll do slash and then pull, pull underscore request template.md. So this will end up creating a markdown file. Within that markdown file, we can then define what we want the template to look like. Whatever we include in this markdown file will automatically be added to our pull request description when it's created. So for me, I like to add a few things to this template. First off, I like to add sort of a link for whatever related issue so might type that something like related issue, and then maybe something like issue goes here. And then I like to do something called proposed changes, change one, change two. This kind of encourages developers to give some high level bullet points of kind of the related changes that were actually made in this diff. Then I'll usually put something like additional info. You can say any additional information or context. Then we might have something like a checklist. And here we might add some actual little checkboxes and do something like tests translations, anything that you want to make sure people have thought of. Maybe that's also like documentation. And then you could do something along the lines of, let's say, screenshots. And you could encourage people to add a screenshot of what the previous and the current one looks like. Now you could format these uh, this screenshot template using something like this so that when you actually view how this is rendered, it will kind of render out in this nice formatted table to make the screenshots easier to look at. So now when we create a pull request, we'll have these items pre-populated for us. Now one thing you notice is our little checkboxes here. In a real pull request, you'll actually be able to check those on and off. So that's actually kind of a nice way to, again, make sure people are adhering to whatever the expected um, requirements are for your pull request. So anyways, now we have this pull request template. Um, we can go ahead and merge this in, say create PR template. And then you could, let's say, commit this file to master. So now we have that pull request template in our .github directory. So now let's say we want to actually create a new pull request. So maybe I want to edit this readme here. I could just do something simple, like uh, make a space. Let's see, I'll create a new branch here. Propose file change. So now I've created a new PR, and you'll see automatically all that information defined in our template is here in this pull request. So like I said, this can really help guide developers on your team towards best practices for whatever you expect of your pull request process. It can also help you just save time. At the end of a long day, maybe it's the Friday afternoon and you're trying to put out that big pull request for your week's worth of work before you go on vacation or something, 
you're not always thinking, oh, how detailed can I make my description? But it's usually beneficial for you to add that extra context. Whoever is going to review that might want that context to know exactly what to look for. It might spark more interesting discussion. So really, it's a good idea to have that extra information. And a pull request template is a good way to encourage those best practices. So I hope this tip has been helpful. If you have something cool in your pull request template for your team, leave a comment down below. I'd love to see what other types of information people are adding in their templates. Until next time, devs.